What up, what up, what up, Moon Pack? This is Fenrir Moon. Come back at y'all with another video. Yeah, yo, yeah, yo. That's right, your Alpha is back with another video. Before we get into this, please hit that subscribe button, that notification button, that like button. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this video today. Because you know why? Because y'all know Fenrir Moon ain't playing with you guys. Y'all know the Moon Pack ain't playing with you guys. Yeah! Stronger than a whale, he can swim anywhere. He can breathe underwater and go flying through the air. And a noble submariner, Prince of the Deep, will be very, very demon. The neighbor of Atlantis is the Prince of the Deep. Namor. Namor the Submariner. Namor McKenzie is a fictional character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics, debuting in early 1939. The character was created by writer-artist Bill Evans for Funny Inc. One of the first packagers in the early days of the comic books that supplies comics on demand to publish looking to enter the new medium. Initially created for the Unleashed Comics Motion Picture Funnies Weekly, the Submarina first appeared publicly in Marvel Comics Issue 1, cover date October 1939. The first comic book from Timely Comics, the 1930s through the 1940s, predecessor of the company Marvel Comics. During that period, known to historians and fans, and the golden age of the comic books, the Submariner was one of the timely top three characters, along with Captain America and the original Human Torch. Everett said the character name was inspired by Samuel Taylor Coleridge Palm, the rim of the ancient marina. Everence came up with the name Namor by writing down noble sounding names backwards and thought Ronan and Namor looked the best. Yeah, I just want to remind you guys, please hit that subscribe button and please hit that notification button and please hit that like button and please leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the Fenrir Moon channel. And please let me know what you think about this video. Later. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Out of it. See you soon. Stronger than a whale, he can swim anywhere. He can breathe underwater and go flying through the air. The neighbor of Atlantis is the prince of the deep. An atmosphere of gloom pervades the fabled city of Atlantis, for within the palace royal, its monarch, Prince Namor I, lies ill. Still the fever rages. My Lord Vashti, there must be more we can do. Our court physician is doing all that can be done, Lady Dormer. We can do not but wait. The drug I have given him will induce deep sleep until the fever abates. I would prescribe rest for you too, my lady. No. I must be near to heed him should he awaken. Very well. We shall prepare a couch for you within this chamber. I beseech thee, try to rest. Exhausted from many sleepless hours, the Lady Dorma soon falls into deep slumber, unaware that her prince is gone. While many leagues away, the figure of the mighty submariner streaks surface world, and in the dark hours of the surface world's night, soon emerges from the sea. My head spins, and my limbs are weak. 
Yet some powerful compulsion drives me on. There is something here that I must find. I must. And as night dissolves into morning... Hey, buddy. There's a law about sleeping on the beach. Come on, on your feet. What's your name? And where do you live? I... I am... I cannot remember. A trip to the station might refresh your memory. Unhand me, no one touches my person. And nobody strikes an officer of the law. You're under arrest. Think you your puny weapons can frighten me? Brother, that does it. I'll book you for... Hey, what the... Come out right here! I just don't believe it. I tell you, Captain, the guy had wings on his feet. He just up and flew away. Yes, that's him, all right. Him? Who? The submariner. I wonder what brought him back to the surface. You mean he came out of the sea? That's right. And he has little love for surface people. There's no telling what he's up to. But you can be sure it's no good. Put out an all-points bulletin for Namor, the submariner. I know not who I am, nor where I am, but I do know that I am in a world unfriendly to me, and somewhere in this alien world is what I seek. But what? And where? At last, he has returned. My chance has come. Ah, Freddy and George. I have a most important job for you. The Submariner is back? Quite correct. And you must find him before the police do. Oh, we recognize him. It would be very difficult to make a mistake. However, to erase any doubt, study this picture. Uh, I see what you mean. Remember, whatever happens, you must not fail. If he's out there, we'll find him. My head, it throbs like the restless tides. And though this compulsion grows stronger, I still know not what it is that I seek. That's him, the submariner. No, oh, the roof. Radio Captain Barr. I must elude them. But if I fly, they will follow. I shall take my chances in here. I must keep out of sight. The Submariner has been sighted on a rooftop at 5th and Clover. Police are on the way. We ask all citizens to stay clear of the area. Step on it, George. We've got to get there first. Put a cordon around the building and don't let anyone in or out. Quickly, before we're spotted. We're in, but once we get the submariner, how do we get out? I'll show you. You say you saw the submariner flying toward Central Park? That's right. He flew out of a window just before the police arrived. Who's calling? <laughs> just call me Red Herring. Flying towards Central Park. Well, it could be a wild goose chase, but we can't afford to take a chance. It worked. Now to find our elusive submariner. Still the enemy hovers above. My only escape is through this accursed building. It is too quiet. I sense a presence of danger. Ah, at last we meet. And you will not escape us. What new menace faces the mighty Submariner now? Only we can get you out of here safely. So if you're smart, you'll come along quietly. I'll not comply with your demand. Then we'll be compelled to take you by force. Take him, George. I've met up with a lot of punches in my day, but never one like that. I'm more concerned with what Mrs. B will say than with your pugilistic career. How could you be so careless? Did you really think you could take the submariner by force? 
Well, you briefed us that he was strong, but you didn't tell us how strong. My one consolation is that the police do not have him either. I will give you another chance. But this time, use your heads. We've combed every inch, Captain. He's nowhere in the area. Something tells me we've been duped. But he's somewhere in this city, and I'll find him if it's the last thing I do. What mysterious force urges me on? I must not stop, yet my limbs grow weak. I must find water, for only that will restore my waning strength. In this folder is every speck of information we have concerning the Submariner. Somewhere in here there must be a clue as to why he's here and where he might go. A guy just doesn't walk around New York with wings on his feet and not be seen. I still think he headed back to sea. That's it! Sooner or later he must find water. Even though he is part human, he must replenish his strength every so often with water. I want every source of water in the city patrolled. The East River, the waterfront, and keep a sharp eye on the fire hydrants. Talk's cheap, Barney. What would you do if you really saw the Submariner? I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd clip his wings, that's what. Well, if I'm seeing right, you just might get the chance. Look over there. The sea. The life-giving sea. I must reach it. I'll bet there's a nice fat reward out for him. What are we waiting for? The sea. I must reach the sea. If you're thinking about taking a swim, forget it. Stand back, you rebel. Get him, fellas. <laughs> Even with my feeble strength, you are no match for me. There he is. Surround him. Stop, or we'll shoot. He's getting away. I have not the strength to fly farther. I must not give up till I find what I seek. But without water, I cannot pursue my quest. Don't tell me you failed again. I promise you we've left no stone unturned. But there is no sign of this submariner. And he can't have gone back to the sea because the police have every inch of waterfront covered. Of course. Why didn't I think of that? Without water, he cannot live. Which makes finding him even more urgent. They've even covered the fountain in Rockefeller Plaza. Ah. But there is one place that would be most natural to him. The aquarium. We forgot the aquarium. With all those fish? Why not? He's certainly used to them. Get me a squad car and fast. I feel the strength returning. The life-giving force of the seawater surges through my veins again. Only moments more, my friends, and I shall be able to... We have you. There's no way out. How are we going to get him out of there? Same as we would any creature of the sea. With a net. There are times I wish I'd taken up another career. We're too late. They have him. Now, what do we tell Mrs. B? There is still a way. Why? What? What am I doing here? For one thing, assault on an officer of the law, namely me. You mean I am imprisoned? These two gentlemen have put up your bail. Is Namor at last at the mercy of the two emissaries of Mrs. B? These are not my friends. Anyone who puts up $5,000 bail is a friend. What do you want of me? The money came from a lady who's very anxious to speak with you. How do I know this is not a trap? Well, you have only my word. And the promise of the lady that once you've seen her, you'll be free to go. Very well. But should you think to deceive me... <laughs> oh, no. Say no more. I recall our last encounter only too well. At 
at last. He is here. Go in. She's waiting. Welcome, Namor. Why do you call me Namor? Don't you know your own name? I know only that a strange compulsion has driven me on. And though I have reached the end, I still know not what I was seeking. Perhaps I do. Listen well, Namor. For what I am about to tell you may decide your destiny. It began many years ago, near the South Pole. A young captain aboard an icebreaker ship gave an order that was to determine your fate. Step charges in place, sir. Good. Fire away. Little did he suspect that an age-old civilization, many fathoms below, would be rocked by that explosion. It is the surface men who are responsible. I shall order a force to go above and investigate. No, Father. To send a force would mean bloodshed. Let me go. And though the king resisted, the strong-willed Princess Ben had her way. Reaching the Oracle, she climbed aboard the silent ship. Oh! Who are you? Now look what I found, Captain. Where did you come from? <laughs> She's having trouble breathing. She fainted. Get some water, quickly. Revived by the water, the beautiful princess looked deep into the eyes of the young captain and both fell hopelessly in love. And so, the two races separated for countless ages were united once more. Until death do us part. Weeks later, the king, concerned about his daughter's prolonged absence, dispatched a war party to rescue the princess. Captain, we're being attacked! And so the heartbroken princess returned to Atlantis to bear a son, then die of a broken heart. And you, Namor, are the child of that tragic marriage. But how could you know all this? Because that young captain was my son. Look at me, Namor, and you will know I speak the truth. I believe you, and I pay you homage. It is not homage that I want. It is to give you your surface heritage. Stay here with me. You shall inherit all my wealth. You are most generous, but I too have wealth. The wealth of a people who love me and the love of Lady Dorma. Lady Dorma? Without her, I could not live. And she would surely die, as my mother did, if I do not return. I see. I have been wrong. Instead of giving you your heritage, I would be denying you the right to live and love as you choose. Return to Atlantis, my son. I shall help you. Freddy, find a suit of clothes for Namor and see that my yacht is ready to sail as soon as it is dark. Police. Freddy will handle him. Evening, officer. Any sign of the submariner? Uh, not a nibble. Say, who's that? Why, uh, that's Mrs. B and her grandson. And I'd better catch up with them. Goodbye, Namor. The memory of these few hours will last me the rest of my life. And I have learned that I can be proud of my surface heritage. And as Namor streaks homeward, there is one in Atlantis who watches and waits. Dorma. Namor, you did return to me. Yes. And here will I stay forever. Stronger than a whale, he can swim anywhere. He can breathe underwater and go flying through the air. The noble submariner, prince of the deep, will be there in any day. The namor of Atlantis is the prince of the deep.